Hey guys, welcome to Whistlepig and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and tonight we're talking about the whiskey. Yes, I said Whistlepig and Literature because that's what's in the house. I wasn't going to do Whistlepig tonight. In fact, I was going to do a book review. I know I've been really slacking and it kind of confuses everybody, books and whiskey, but whatever. I finished uh, Fyodor Dostoyevsky's Crime and Punishment today, and I was going to give a review of this, but it's been a, it's been a long ass day, and I just want to drink some whiskey. And I wasn't gonna drink Whistle Pig tonight, but check this out. Facebook decided that I like Whistle Pig and is pushing some Whistle Pig ads on me uh, for a poor spout, and I'll put the picture up on here. Might have had a drink or two before I ordered that, because normally I wouldn't pay $74 for a pour spout. I guess maybe I thought that it was a pour spout and a bottle of whiskey, but I think it's just the pour spout. It's a cool pour spout, but anyway, it's been a while and I was checking the, the, the website the other day. I was like, where is that pour spout that I ordered? And it said it was fulfilled. Today we're out. Hurricane Idalia has come and gone. We did not get a whole lot of damage uh, we, I feel like we're pretty lucky again here in the Tampa Bay. And I hope if you were affected or any of your loved ones were that you guys are getting the help and being taken care of by your family and your friends and the insurance company and everyone who's involved. So, but for us here at the house, we uh, got some flooding in our garage and that was it. But we had the old time wooden paneling in the garage. So we spent all day yesterday and today taking all the contents out of our garage and ripping all the paneling off of the walls. So now it's just cinder block and throwing those all the way in the dumpster and then drying and we have to, you know, it's salt water inside. So bleaching the floor in the garage, uh, our dryer's dead, washing machines, iffy. So then we had to put some new shelving together, let everything dry, put it back inside. It's been a long day. I didn't feel like doing a book review. So tonight it's whiskey. A package was delivered. And Laura was like, what is that? I'm like, I, I don't know. I just threw it inside and just went about our day. And so we get inside at the end of the day and I pull this out of, whoa, out of the package there. And it is piggyback. Oh. Piggyback bourbon and piggyback rye from Whistle Pig. And I was like, ah. Man, did I, did I mess up my order? And so I went and I looked at the, uh, the order that I placed and no, I, I paid $74 for a Whistle Pig uh, spout. Again, it's a cool spout, but uh, this is not a, and there was no poor spout in the box. And it says, um, I can't read it. It says my name and my address on the box. So then I pulled out the receipt or maybe Mrs. Captain told me to look at the receipt. If your name is Tim and you live in Howell, Michigan, then you are missing two bottles of Whistle Pig piggyback, the bourbon and the rye. And you have a cool pour spout that was sent to you instead of me. So I emailed these guys already and they got, they got back to me in just a couple hours and said, hey, sorry, you're right, we messed that up. Uh, keep the bottles and we'll send you the pour spout. So I got, uh, you know, 100 bucks, 95 bucks, 75 bucks worth of whiskey here and, and the pour spout. So I feel pretty good about that. I, I don't know if I had, was a little bit uh, tipsy when I ordered that uh, pour spout the first time, but I'm excited to get it when it gets here. It looks really cool. I have a couple of bottles with cool pour spouts. And so I was kind of looking forward to adding to that. And I have just whistle pig everywhere here right now, just because uh, we still have boxes of whiskey there. My shelves are pretty much um, disorganized still. I took some of my more expensive whiskey to the hotel when we went there, and I just haven't put the Boss Hog and the Whistle Pig 18. And I don't even know what this one is. I thought about opening the Whistle Pig 18 while we were there in the hotel, but I had so many other bottles that I did open and I had a great time opening. As you can check those videos, I'll link those in below. 
uh, opened up uh, a couple of new bottles, did the Russell Reserve 13, did the Stag, and that was, that was great. I had a great time opening those. I uh, opened my 2XO Innkeeper's Blend, and I've had a pour of that, but that was my first, that was my first pour ever of a Stag, and I thought it was great. It blew me away. I've been drinking Irish whiskey before that Stag, which was like 80, 86 proof, and then that Stag was 130 proof, and it just blew my socks off. I was not prepared for that. But tonight is the Whistle Pig, and I've been a fan of Whistle Pig since I found it, and I can't remember which is the first one I got, probably the six year rye. And uh, let's see, what do we got? Got the 10 year, that's pretty good. It's probably the, uh, the funkiest of the bunch for me. I really enjoy this uh, 12 year, it's finished in different cask, and it is a fantastic product. I would say the 15 year is a phenomenal whiskey. Man, we really enjoyed that one. Only 92 proof, but man, I really, really enjoyed this 15 year. Um, and they have a couple of different ones. There's two different, I believe, 15 year expressions. One's quite a bit more than the other one. Uh, I'm missing, everything's kind of in a disarray. All my whistle pigs, not where it's supposed to be. So these, these just came today. They're not open and I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna open those because I already have a bourbon and a rye that's open. So uh, it just feels kind of cool to get uh, two free bottles of whiskey. And like I said, it's been a long day. So I've done not hardly any research or looking at anything on these bottles. I'm gonna read to you what the bottles say, uh, what I know about Whistle Pig, how much I paid for these, uh, specs and stats, and what I think about them. All right, bourbon, let's do bourbon over here. Yeah, Whistle Pig, it's been great. I, uh, I really have liked uh, all of their products that I've had. That's a Vermont distillery. They got their start doing rye and rye imported from Canada. So if you're really like, I don't drink Canadian whiskey, I'm like, all right, well, I guess the Whistle Pig ryes are not for you. The Whistle Pig, I mean, every Whistle Pig that I have, except the bourbon, they're all Canadian products. 18 year, the Boss Hog. Tint, um, these are all, all the rise. Product of Canada, 15 year. Product of Canada, 12. Product of Canada. They're, they're all product of Canada's, except for the bourbon. And you know what, I'm okay with that because they're all really good. Okay, so the uh, bourbon here, I paid $39.99 for this bottle. I paid $44.99 for the rye. And this is my second or third bottle of Whistle Pig, uh, the piggyback six year rye. I find it uh, to be pretty good. And according to the website, it was designed to be a bartender's friend. They even designed the bottle to be easy to pour for bartenders. Uh, so it'd be great in cocktails. And I, and I, I think that is the case. It uh, is very a youthful kind of a whiskey. I think it really packs a punch for that 96. So 96 or 98. Okay, this is kind of a weird 96.56 96 proof. I find that a really odd number, but it is what it is. The bourbon is um, 100 proof. They're both six years old. Mash bill unknown on the bourbon. Uh, they just say on the website that it's a high corn with a dash of rye. That's all they say on there. Let's see anything else on, let's see, pot stilled, small batch. Again, small batch just means more than one barrel and less than some other number. This is 100% rye. So that's even higher than say, uh, even the high west. Even the high west I think is uh, less than that. Trying to see if it said here, uh, non-chill filtered. Doesn't say anywhere on here, non-chill filtered. Bourbon, 100 proof, small batch, bold flavor, of course, new American oak barrels. It's a perfect partner to piggyback 100% rye. Uh, it's a full scent on flavor. Okay, cool. Again, small batch. Doesn't say anyone here, non-chill filtered. Okay, this is a, again, a product of Canada. It's bottled in Barstown, Kentucky. Oh, that's interesting. So this bottle that I had, it's uh, bottled in Bardstown, Kentucky. 
the, whoops, the bottle that just came, it says something different. This says import, imported from Canada instead of product of Canada, same thing I think. Um, bottled by Whistle Pig, Mineville, New York. So this is bottled by Whistle Pig in Bardstown. This is bottled in New York. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, here's the open bourbon. So this is, there's no date on there. This is interesting as well, because this is different. Bottled or distilled in Vermont and Indiana. Bottled in New York. This bourbon I just received, which I read the label earlier. This is distilled in Vermont, Indiana, and Kentucky. So this new one has some Kentucky juice in it as well. So um, interesting. Of course, Indiana, I obviously think MGP. So uh, MGP bourbon in here. Uh, this is 100% Canada. So, so a little different there. This was, uh, again, bottle in Kentucky, bottle in New York. Okay, cool. Bourbon, six year. I've not had a lot of the Whistle Pig bourbon. I just bought this so I could give it a go because all the other products that I had of theirs is the Rise. Let's see. It smells very sweet. Just, they say a dash of rye and I would say, yeah, a, a dash. Just, I don't even really get a hint of any spice on that nose at all. Just caramel goodness, sweetness. Maybe a hint of, did I say maple? I've had the, the um, Jack Daniels 27, maple gold, maple finished. And I also have a uh, Stranahan's, which was finished in maple syrup barrels. It was interesting. It's a different note. Like it, it's much more muted than say the Stranahan's, but just a hint of maple in there. Cheers. Mm. First whiskey of the day. I've been drinking all day long. But outside just, I've just been since probably nine o'clock this morning, every ounce of my clothing has been drenched in the sweat. As we've been outside working in the garage and in the sun, running truckloads to the dumpster and throwing stuff away. I just drinking bottle after bottle of uh, electrolyte infused water, Cokes. And I didn't really want obviously whiskey while I was out uh, working some power tools and stuff like that while we were in the garage. Again, very nice, just really sweet. Just a hint of maple, maybe a bit of a, maybe that maple is kind of transitioning to me, just a hint of waffle cone. We used to work at an ice cream store when I was in high school, and I still have that imprint in my mind of waffle cones. Ah. I get just that dash of rye spice right there on the finish. The initial uh, hit is just sweetness, um, a bit more of that maple and some caramel in there, but uh, then it just finishes with just a hint of that rye spice. And uh, you know, it's not very viscous or the mouthfeel is just okay. Um, it's not lingering like that Russell's Reserve 13 and the stag was just like, just like forever, just like, oh man, just feeling it. I had some whiskey and it's over now and uh, it was great and finished really quickly. But I mean, so $39.99 for that whiskey. I mean, there's definitely comparable ones out there. I mean, I always go back to the Wild Turkey 101, the Rare Breed. Uh, rare Breed uh, bourbon is higher uh, price than this. The 101 is much less than this. So at 101 proof, well, that's pretty close to 100, obviously, but, uh, but significantly less. $22, I think, for the Wild Turkey 101. The High West which is a different bourbon. It's more of a high rye bourbon. And, uh, and that is uh, MGP in Heaven Hill, I think right now. So, or at least that's the cask strength, Never mind. It's been a long day. Whistle pig rye. Okay, so there we go. This is more what I think when I think of whistle pig is that rye, some youthfulness. 
a little bit of pepper notes in there. Just a man, it's uh, it is getting my nose a little bit. Just some tickling in there. I like it. I've had a couple bottles of the Whistle Pig Rye. Uh, Forty four ninety nine is the MSRP at Total Wine anymore. I think Total Wine's pretty much MSRP. You can find it pretty much anytime you go to the store. This is, I mean, I talk to guys at work and other friends and, uh, on, you know, I've had a couple guys who are into Whistle Pig and who mentioned that and if I ask them, like one of my favorite questions is, hey, if I gave you a hundred bucks and said, hey, go buy some bourbon, what would you come back with? And some guys are like, I'll come back with uh, two bottles of, you know, or five bottles of Evan Williams. Um, you know, a couple guys have said Whistle Pig and they're, they're fans of it and, uh, but it's, not very well known for some reason. I don't think it's an everyman whiskey. Plus it's not a bourbon. A lot of guys are just kind of into the bourbon stuff. So yeah, it's a completely different nose than the bourbon. It's just sweet, flat, little muted, no kick, no spice, no tickling my nose. The rye, tickling my nose a little bit. Some of that peppery spice. I like it. It's uh, it's nice. Cheers. Man, it's been a long day. Mm, I can't keep saying that enough. I actually went and bought some pizza today. And they do uh, pizza and it's a tap house. And so they had quite a few IPAs and whatnot. I don't really do a lot of IPAs. Here and there, I'll do them. Bought a couple uh, cans, brought them home. I haven't opened one. I thought about having one today, but or one to this evening, but I'm doing whiskey instead. Maybe I'll, maybe we'll go turn the TV on and uh, I'll play, put something on one. Maybe I'll open an IPA. How about you? Do you like IPAs? I asked the guy if they had any bourbon or any whiskey finished uh, beers or IPAs over there. They've had some, but they didn't have any while I was there today picking that pizza up, but yeah. It's not something I'm really gotten into. I have them every now and again. I got some friends who are really into it, but um, just hasn't been my jam yet. Still like learning the whiskey thing. Whistle pig rye. Mm. I do like it. It's got a nice flavor. That's 100% rye. And I thought I would just have more. I actually remember it being a little, like when I think of this whiskey, I think of it being really peppy and peppery. And it has that pepperness or that pepper, that pepper flavor. It has that rye. I'm catching some of that rye. I've been eating a lot of rye breads lately. And I, I'm catching some of that, but it's actually not, it's, it's just not hitting me as peppy as I feel like is what I re uh, remember it being, where it's just kind of more impactful on me. And maybe it's just, maybe I'm just so overwhelmed by my exhaustion that it's just, uh, it's not hitting me the way I remember it. And I'm not saying that I don't like it, I'm just saying it's a little less, um, it's a little underwhelming today compared to what I usually think of it as. I did a review of this whiskey, I think when I first started this year, um, I was still doing whiskey reviews within my book reviews, which was not confusing for anybody, of course. So you're watching a, you know, a book review on David Copperfield and the guy breaks in and does a, you know, piggyback whistle pig rye review and you're like, what is going on? So I've separated my whiskey reviews out of my book reviews, which was probably a dumb idea to begin with, but uh, I just, I feel like I remember it saying just how peppy it is. And today it's just a little more, a little bit more muted for me. And I really like it though. It's really kind of what I need. Just some more of that, some of that warmth from the whiskey, some of that spice that kind of just pep me up just a little bit, but not so much as overwhelming me. And they say this was designed really to be a bartender's friend, to sip neat and to put in cocktails. And I, I, I agree, I think the proof is right. I think any less proof, I, if you're making a cocktail, it kind of gets overwhelmed.
by all the uh, ice melting and all the other ingredients in the cocktails. But 96.56, uh, it'll stand up to a cocktail. I think, again, going back to the Wild Turkey 101, that's just a better proof, I think, in a cocktail, and certainly even a rare breed, if you're willing to put a $49 um, whiskey in your cocktail. I, I do, like I, I have no problem dropping that into a cocktail. That 116 proof carries through better into a cocktail. In the 44.59 or 44.99 range, there are quite a few nice ryes out there. I mean, it's really a competitive space that 45 and under, right? I mean, you got the, uh, you got the bullet rye. You have the Rebel Empire, uh, which is the rye? You have the Rebel Empire uh, Emerald, Emerald Giant. You have, again, the High West, the Double Rise 39, I guess the thing is the MSRP, and probably a little younger than this, and I think more, for some reason, it just, it, it always impacts me more. There's other great rides out there um, that this is competing with, but I think this is, actually, like today, it's just, it's so mellow to me. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's not how I thought that this was going to go. I thought it would hit me a little, little different. And to me, there's almost no finish on this whiskey in the sense is I'll just call it a short finish. I get those typical rye spices, right? Get some cinnamon, that rye, uh, I think it was the rye bread spices, uh, the baking spices. They're all in there, but you drink it and it's just, it's just gone. There's not very, uh, it's not very, Viscous, it's just, it's a nice whiskey. I don't know really how to finish. It's been an overwhelming day for me. I'm really happy to finish my day with these, uh, with the Whistle Pig. I wasn't intending to do Whistle Pig tonight. We got those free bottles. I thought, hey, I'm gonna just celebrate a little bit with the Whistle Pig and thank you Whistle Pig for messing up that order and sending me those two free bottles. And I, and don't let me this review like down you on the Whistle Pig stuff. I do appreciate their products. I think the bourbon here is great. They're starting to distill their own products. And you know, I think they're still kind of a, they've been around for a while now. Uh, I'm not sure how long, 2005 or so, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And so they've been distilling their own product and they've been still obviously sourcing from Canada. But you can just see in these bottles where the, uh, you know, these are both from Canada or these are both from Canada but they're changing their sources of whiskey apparently and they're distilling in different places but uh so maybe things are changing over there as they grow and mature the company and get larger and larger honestly i don't know to me for 39.99 and 44.99 these will have a place on my shelf they'll always be on there um, i will probably as i well i have a backup already but the rye certainly will always have a spot on my shelf and i think you should too and again, it's my last mention ever of Hurricane Adalia. And if you, again, have been affected or whatever, I wish you the best. And I hope you can get every, all the help you and your family and your loved one needs. And, uh, but that's it for tonight. And my next review is going to be a book review. It'll be Fyodor Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment because I am behind in my reading list for this year. This whole channel started because I wanted to read 52 books in 52 weeks and read and review them on YouTube. Well, whiskey is kind of overtaking my channel. So uh, I need to focus here for the last four months of the year. We'll still see plenty of whiskey reviews, but I'm gonna step it up here with the book reviews. They'll be coming through. So feel free to check those out as well if you're here for the whiskey. And for now, you know what to do, my guys. I hope you read something good and drink something great. Turn the pages and stay thirsty. Cheers.